Okay. Good. So I'd like to welcome you to our class this morning in marketing strategy. And we're going to start with um, unit two today, which is assessing the internal environment. Uh, we want to demonstrate an understanding of how firms create competitive advantage using the resource based view and the market orientation view. Also, we're going to demonstrate an understanding of the core competences of organizations and how they use them in the competition. We're also going to make an assessment of the competitive capabilities of companies. We're going to uh, analyze an industry using the Porter's Five Forces model and show how companies are able to gain competitive advantage in the market and to compete internationally. Okay. Uh, well, for us to assess the environment for the organization, first of all, we divide this environment into two broad aspects. First is internal environment, and then there's external environment. Internal environment, you're looking at what it is that you have as an organization or as a company. What resources could you have? These resources are in form of um, people, uh, finances, equipment that you may have, uh, and many other aspects. Okay, so it's important to understand uh, how we stand regarding those resources because they're able to define our capabilities. They're able to define how unique we might be as a, as a company. They're able to help us to know our competitiveness, to know our uh, competences and the like. And you can use them to build our competitive advantage, actually, our competitiveness. And that's why one of the tools, you remember when we were doing like strategic marketing planning, one of the tools we're using was the SWAT. In the internal, we want to look at your strengths and weaknesses. And in the external, you're looking for opportunities or threats. Now, weaknesses or strength of what? Well, for those things which you can control, which are under you, which are, are the resources that we have just been mentioning or talking about. Good. Now, there are so many approaches people have uh, come up with of how to assess the internal environment. Okay. One of the approaches is the use of uh, nine M's. Nine M's. So you're looking at all the resources that you have and put them into nine M's. Yeah. I'll give you just <clears throat> example of one M. Then you give me uh, the others as well. Yeah, the, me I'll give. Or oh, is there anybody who, who could start mentioning to us uh, the first M? The letter M, now, you put 
you you look at that letter M to stand for a resource that we can find in an organization. Can you give us one? Mm, management, managers, something like that. Okay, let's just talk about management. That's right. Yes. So put that. How could we say management is a resource? We are looking at management in terms of their the ability to uh, carry and implement the vision of the company. We are looking at their um, management styles. We are looking at the uh, the culture which they are they are building for the organization. We are looking at the experiences. They are looking at the strategic thinking, looking at their uh, decisiveness, which they have as management. In short, we're looking at management of people who can propel the company or organization to success anyway. So there could be some gaps there and there could be some areas of strength. So we're gonna look at them in terms of their weakness, and their strength. Thank you. Uh, M number two. M number two. Jackson. Oh, you're sleeping. You have not yet woken up. Yes, Jackson. Um, maybe we could, could talk about the uh, uh, marketing part. Sorry, Jackson, you are breaking. Which one you're saying you can do what? Uh, you are breaking or didn't get you? Okay, you may write in the chat if you feel you, you are failing. You maybe internet, but I hope you you are getting us. Levy. Hello. Maybe material, sir. Good, Tokozile. Uh, material is the second M. And there, what are we looking at? We're looking at the availability of those materials and the type of materials which are there and the, the source of those materials and the, how dear or expensive or cheap they might be. And the, uh, whether those are appropriate uh, materials according to the the method of our production or the way of which we are producing ourselves. Okay, thank you very much. So we're going to assess their, their strength or weaknesses in those areas. That is number two material. Number three, quickly. Sir, Jackson has commented He's put yeah, his, yeah, answers yeah. On the, his answer on the comment. Oh, he says the marketing department of the organization. Uh, how how is that uh, maybe? How is that uh, a resource? Is there anybody who would want to make a comment on the same? How could we say that? Uh, marketing department of the organization is a resource because that is a functional structure anyway. So what did you have in mind? 
or maybe we could say in, uh, the market itself is a resource. So uh, um, then you want to look at the relationships that you have with the market. That's what you're going to assess. How well you understand that market? How close are you to that particular market? Because the market is what uh, make, keeps you going anyway. And that's why you want to look at it as a resource as well. Okay, number, that is number three, I guess. Hey. Yeah, we started with management, material, then market. Number four. Machinery, sir. Yes, machinery as well. Yes. Uh, the kind of equipment and tools that we have in an organization. Yeah. We want to find out, is it appropriate one? Is it a modern one? Is it, is it giving us problems, breakdowns, and requiring a lot of maintenance? Then you also want to find out... <clears throat> Uh, is it possible to find uh, a replacement for that if possible yeah you 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 you'll be gonna be assessing all those things yeah and if uh, it's possible uh such machines available or not some um, i want to tell you that some companies have uh, ended up having machines which they cannot even repair or they cannot even replace afterwards. And in Zambia, we have one typical example of such a company that had built machines and afterwards they could not even find the owners who supply, the people that supplied, supplied to them, they could not even find spare parts, they could not even, and they ended up packing it. And that is Kapiri Glass, if you've heard about that company. Capiri grass. Um, I don't know whether now they have revived it, but now if it's reviving, it's totally uh, new technology and totally different one because they could not find the people, uh, they could not manage even to rehabilitate uh, that kind of machines. Okay, good, thank you. That's number four. Number five. Yes, Levy, talk to us. So I was, I'm not sure about this one. Maybe how about manpower? Good. Manpower, uh, uh, of course, it, uh, it also includes woman power. Uh, that is an issue to do with the HR. And in the issue to do with the HR, you're talking about uh, the skills that you need, the experiences that you may need, the qualifications of those people. Yeah, and that will build and help you to have certain competences that could be unique to your organization. Now, what is it that you're interested in? As uh, In terms of assessing, you assessing whether these people are available uh, in the, where you are going to operate, or where you're operating, and um, whether they're experienced, whether they have the skills that you need and the like. Yeah, so those are things that you, and the, how expensive or cheap is it to hire such individuals on your, on your work or on your job? Good, so that is number five, I guess. Let's go to number six. Number six. Chanda. Is that maybe a uh, moral values? Well, uh, moral values will do with the, that's about culture. Yeah. Culture, but in business, uh, you're more, 
you were more interested in the ethical behavior and things like that. So that is maybe to do with the culture of the organization. Uh, and that should be like a philosophy as opposed to as an asset, I think. Okay. So, okay, sir. Uh, which other one? Mm -hmm. Which other mm, one you money. think you can you can think of? Money, yes, exactly. That is number six. Money, yeah, money. Uh, that aspect now you want to build a good reputation as a company. That your your credit worthiness is there. You want to ensure that. He, uh, you manage your cash flows, you manage your budgets, you, 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 you got issues to do with the sources of financing and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, availability of cash would make a company to have a good reputation, that's all. And that's what you want to assess in that aspect. Thank you. Now, let's go to number seven. We've got three more to go, I think. We are doing well. What would be the seventh one? Sir, is but could method be the same as management or could they be different? Mm, that's a that's a very good question. So if it's a, a question, let's pose it to the class. What do you think? Management and methods, are they one and the same thing? What do you think? Management and methods, would they be one and the same thing? What do you mean by methods in any case? And what do you mean by management? Management, you have already discussed it. We're talking about uh, people holding managerial positions. We're going to be able to make decisions for the company and as to which direction it ought to move. And uh, we'll make things happen. Yeah. Then the method, what would be the method? On the other hand, uh, the way that people do things in an organization, how they, yeah, I think something like that. Okay, you can mute, then I can explain what what methods are. Uh, methods are just ways in which you, you do things, the techniques that you can follow. Uh, those are some of the things that you can, um, uh, you want to understand. So you're going to assess maybe the flow of work some people even come up with the flow charts to enable us to see where there could be hurdles and things like that. And then we could answer questions like, is our method giving us the optimal results that we're looking for? Or it can it be an impingement to what we want to achieve? The way you are doing your work, your job. Yeah. That's that's uh, about methods, okay? And that is number uh, seven. Number eight. Number eight.
Sorry, sir, which one was the seventh? You give us the methods. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Number eight. Okay, let's put it, put it as management information systems. You do, you do guide me whether I'm correct that to say that is number eight, eh? Remember me, I'm not writing them down, I'm just saying them. I'm following what you, so I hope that's number eight, management information system, meaning you must have, well, information is an asset anyway, or it's a very important resource in an organization. And therefore you want to uh, ensure that you have appropriate information that would enable you to uh, make decisions that are going to help the organization to move forward. Now, you, what are you assessing? You'll be assessing things like uh, how easy or difficult for management to get that information or even disseminating of such information to downwards to other people. Is it easy or challenging in an organization? How do you store that information? Uh, how useful is that uh, information? How relevant that information might be? How accurate and how recent? All those are good questions that we must assess about information. But yeah, that's about the management information system. The last one, the ninth one, uh, you can put is called the makeup. <clears throat> makeup. You're spelling exactly the way you you do your makeup early in the morning when you wake up. Mm -hmm. So makeup in this case it's it's it stands for organization structure. Organization structure. Okay, maybe that's where we have those departments that you can talk about here. Yeah? Why is organization import structure important? Well, you can have your brilliant uh, plans, goals, and things like that. But you need a structure to help you to deliver those things. Yeah. But it goes in the structure, that's where you're gonna find even the people anyway, who are assigned in those uh, uh, roles and duties, as it were. Okay. So those are nine M's. Somebody came up with that. That would help uh, organization to assess. But if you want, you can even add some more other M's if you can manage. When you do a research, you can say, no, no. We can categorize others in this way. For example, uh, some, somebody says we need also to talk about minute. Minute there, they are talking more about communication. How communication flows in an organization. Yeah. So those are some of the, uh, the M's that you can use. So that's a model. It's a code nine M's model. Okay, so now let's move on uh, where we have organization creating competitive advantage. By the way, what do you mean by saying competitive advantage? What does it mean competitive advantage? Having having an edge over your competitors. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning. Uh, Meaning you have found a way to do things uh -huh. better. 
Meaning you found mm-hmm. a way to do better than what your computers are doing. Okay, thank you. Good. Now, that must be created. That's what we mean here by creating competitive advantage. Yeah. So something that makes you to be different, it gives you an advantage and it gives you a competitive position. And that's why we are calling it as a competitive advantage. Now, we are saying you that needs to be created. And to create that, uh, Holosen considered the two approaches. One is calling a market oriented orientation view, and the other one is the resource based view. Now, resource based view approach of helping you to create competitiveness is actually uh, universally used. Now, it's it's widely used this uh, uh, this approach and you have seen that many fields have adopted this model okay now let's go let's now look at a resource based view approach of creating competitive advantage resource based what do you mean by resource based? It simply means we go to look at uh, the kind of resources that an organization has. And these are broken into two broad categories. They're divided into two broad, uh, broad uh, categories. The first one is called the tangible resources. And the, the, the 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 so, sorry class let me just close the door i can hear some my colleague when he's teaching you i'm sure you are hearing in the background aren't you okay yes sir mm-hmm. okay Okay, at least we've minimized. <laughs> yeah, we all differ in the way in which we deliver our, our programs. Others, you go to shout so that you can, you can be heard. Eh? But I hope you are hearing me. Aren't you, aren't you hearing me? Yes, sir, we can you hear you. Hearing me. Oh, okay, loud and clear. Yes, sir. Very good. 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 Yeah, so we are saying we can, we, the, the resources are divided into two categories, tangible and intangible. Tangible have to do with the physical in most cases, and uh, you are able to touch it, and uh, you can even quantify it. Okay, so it tends to be in a physical form. You can touch it, and you can even quantify it. Examples are like the ones we've just been talking about under 9 Ms. Uh, these include the people, manpower, uh, production, methods of how you're going to uh, no, no, not methods, equipment that you're going to use in your production. Then materials, raw materials that you can, your, your materials you're going to use in producing the goods. Those are physical uh, resources that you can find there. Yeah. I hope I also said about, yeah, I already said about manpower. Good. What about money? Money is equally also physical, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so those are some of the, in that category of tangibility. Then the other one is intangibles. Intangibles are those resources, of course, which do not exist in physically, but they're important for the success of the company. 
Yeah. What are examples of this? Your reputation as a company, your brand image, trademarks, patent, patents, even culture, are some of the examples we can give when, when you're talking about the tangible assets or tangible resources. Okay. And those are very important for uh, the company to be able to be successful. So with that in mind, uh, how, how, uh, how do you assess using this resource based? After you categorize this, there are some tests that are done to eat. And these ones you can you'll be able to follow them on your on the chart there. Uh, you have competitive resource factors to take into consideration. So what you do with that <clears throat> you conduct a competitive superiority test conduct uh, a competitive superiority test. So here you want to consider the extent to which research carried out by the firm has contributed to differentiating the company from the competitors. Okay? Meaning, where are we better than competitors? That's what you want to test there. The other uh, competitive resource we want to test is imitation test. What are you going to test in there? Uh, you're testing uh, whether your product can e be easily imitated by competitors or not. And if not, if they, they can imitate it easily, that is, how can you prevent that? That's what you want to, 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 to assess. The other one is called the duration test. Duration test. The resource that you have, how long can it exist or stay with you as an organization for it to enable you to be competitive? Yeah? So, to make it durable, for example, if it's manpower, you want to ensure that uh, those people... <laughs> sorry, you had uh, somebody, sorry for interruption, eh? Okay. Let's continue. Yeah, so we, we are saying uh, under duration, if it's a human resource, you you want them to be there for a long time to come. So you must put incentives in place to enable them. For example, you have to, if you have invested in them, you have trained them, you have developed them, you want to use those skills to the advantage of your company and for a longer period at least. That's the duration that we're talking about your testing. Another testing for your resource is appropriateness test. Okay? Appropriateness test. Your resources, are they appropriate to the needs or according to what is taking place on the market? Are they appropriate, for example, uh, if, if, if you have raw materials or you have machines, let's take, are your machines appropriate to materials that are being used in the country, for example? Or are your machines appropriate to the skills that you can find in Zambia, in your country, or in that country. 
That's what you want to test in that area as well. Okay. Do we have even people can supply us those the, 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 those things that we are looking for? Um, another one is called the sub uh, substu subu stu, substitutability. Ooh, what a word! <laughs> okay, not only appropriateness, but is it also suitable to what we want to achieve? Similar, yeah. Can it enable us to introduce new products and the like? So that is what is going to help you when you are assessing the resources that you have. Have you noticed that this now, what you have mentioned, they are looking at the same like the nine aims that we started with but in a different angle of what needs to be tested. And in terms of resources, it's almost the same resources, only that they divide them into tangible and intangible resources. Okay. I hope, I hope you followed that, that, that aspect. Now, there's a question that I want us to, I need your input. Uh, because now we've moved from resource-based as an approach. Now we want to look at uh, competences. Now, there are three words that uh, confuses me in most cases. And I, want, I need your clarification on them. What's the difference between or among these three? One is uh, capacity, two, capability, three, competence. I'll repeat that. The difference of capacity, capability, and competence. Your input, please. your input on those three C's. What are their differences? How do they differ from each other? Or are they one and the same? Yes, Levy, which one would you want to start with or you want to discuss the, all three of them? No, I, I think capability is the ability to perform some task, having that ability okay. to, to, to deliver. Okay. Yeah, so that's what you can call capability. Capability, yes. You are capable, so you have the ability to perform some tasks to expected heights. Okay, thank you. Levy, uh, what about capacity? I, I, <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, so you're laughing, yeah. <laughs> like you, feel, you feel like you have confused yourself. Huh? <laughs> no, I, I know what, what, is, what I'm about to say next can, could be lies, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, say it, share it. Uh, this, this internet thing. Levy, we cannot hear you. Oh, yeah. The volume. Oh, okay, yeah, you... Increase your volume, we'll be able to hear you. Okay, maybe capacity can be the measure of one's ability to perform. So okay. capability is the, the, the ability to perform 
tasks to expected heights, and then capacity is the measure of that ability that one has. So give us an example to help okay. us appreciate that. Give an example to help us appreciate that. I'll, I'll have to think about one first while others are giving answers. Oh, okay, okay. I'll leave it to you to do that. While others, what about the others? What do you think? Okay, now that's going to give us the example for that. Maybe you may want to talk about competence. What is the competence? Confidence is like um, having the confidence, I would put it as, as uh, possessing knowledge of, uh, of a skill, that, of, of a task you've been given. So you're saying competence is about knowledge? Mm-hmm. So are you competent? Yes. Are sir. you competent in the marketing strategy? By mid of the semester, I will be. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice to hear that. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Levy, have you come up with the example? So that you just uh, nail it now. Yeah, uh, we have kept quiet. Suppose we had to put a competent competence to mean uniqueness. Uniqueness, something that you have, or you have acquired, or you you naturally have, or something that makes you to be different from others. Actually, the idea that becomes your competence. And organizations must be able to create that. Eh? And one way to do that is mainly uh, using a human resource. Because it's flexible enough, they can be able to do a job much perfect well. Yeah. Uh, for example, all women can cook in Shima. So they have ability to cook in Shima. Well, at least the ones I know. <laughs> and then the, the capacity for them to cook is how much of that in Shima they can be able to cook. Like what uh, Levi says, we can measure it now. The degree. The competence is how well they will do it. Because every woman, though they can all cook, you agree with me that uh, the shima that comes from the different hands will taste different. I don't know uh, what you call that in English when in shima is seen up here. It's just hey. What do you call it, Jinufia? 
English was any Bemba ya TV. But in English, what do you call that? Uncooked. Yeah, and palatable sometimes. Uh, yeah. Really, you're going to see that. Uh, some are very, very good in terms of uh, preparing certain, uh, in Zambia, we call them relishes. In preparing some relish, very, very good. Others are good in baking. So they become that they are competent in there. They have developed over time. And uh, that competence in a form of a company must be something, but it could be even difficult for others to imitate, by the way. Yeah, difficult. Not easily copied. Then it, it might lose your comp the, its comp the competences and its competitiveness. And that's what we want to, to, to talk about. Now, in terms of organization, let's come back now to organization. How can you use those terms? Well, the organization must be capable of ability to produce, supply, distribute that which it conducts in its business. The capacity then is to extend to which they can be able to do that. Because even a small scale person can do it, but compared to a bigger one, these ones, they have a bigger capacity in terms of measurement. We can say they can do 90% of the job. Whereas these ones are small, they can only do 40% of the job. The competence is the final touch now, which is attached to that particular product. How well they do it, how unique they're going to do it. But also you can have competences in the form of the methods that are used in producing those products. You also have competences in those areas. Okay, so it's true. The knowledge, the experience, and things like that, that would help you. So is it possible that you can measure those things or you can be able to identify those things and see whether the company have, has them or not? And if they don't, how can they be helped to create and build to, to achieve those things? Because that will make them to be competitive, so to speak. Okay. Thank you. At least you've contributed very well in that area. Okay, let's look at the other part, the roots of competitive advantage. The roots of competitive advantage. Before I go, maybe there would have been a question that you wanted to ask. Sir, um, I'm behind. I don't know what topic are we looking at. Ask you, who are you asking? We are under assessing internal, internal environment. Assessing Pardon? the internal environment. You okay, need that's required. Mm -hmm. I need to? Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any is there any question in what we discussed so far? If not, let's then look at the roots of competitive advantage. Where does our competitive advantage come from? Now. You can think of any organization. Uh, is there any one of you that is working? Any one of you that is uh, We're not working, sir. You're not working. OK. No. So you may get into a job. Uh, Oh, let's talk about the school where we are. Okay, C uh, U Z. Uh, 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 
what could be where can it draw its competitiveness where could it draw its competitive advantage on the market okay so these are the routes the first one is the technical resource resources now when you're talking about technical resources you're really talking about the things that uh, shape and bring about your product huh? if it's in manufacturing it would include the engineering the drawing the designs the style and the, all those things up to the production when you now put it into machine language and then you produce that's all part uh, part of technical resources uh, which also include the r d or research and development they all become part of technical resource and the, that uh, that that resource it means uh, you know remember what you said about uh, the equipment and the res and the methods you must be having uh, you must know to be unique in those in those areas of technical know how and here are some companies who were examples of the use of technical resources like Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, and IBM, as just a few examples, but there are many companies out there. And that's why any company that you'll be working for must be able to, to achieve that particular, uh, com uh, particular competency, if you like, or particular uh, a resource okay the second one we are talking about is the uh, financial resources yeah financial resources uh, <clears throat> you would like to think about uh, the reputation, the credit worthiness that you are known to be. Why is that important? You know, when he, people would want to do business with you, suppliers would want to supply to you because they know you're going to pay them anyway. And they will shine those my internet okay very soon i'll be out uh-huh i'll come back now okay thank you you would rather maybe supply to companies like zesco compared to supply to say minister of home affairs <laughs> not that they don't have money but you know how long it will take for you, them to pay you compared to maybe to zesco that you might be able to pay you in a short period of time yeah and now how does that become a competitive advantage even the business i mean customers would want to deal with people whom they know have got that wonderful reputation of fulfilling their obligations 
because then they know that uh, once they're going to give them orders, they will be able to supply. Yeah, they won't be saying, no, we couldn't do this because, uh, you know, they come, uh, uh, I've stopped sharing again. Just to hold on a bit. But anyway, you are following, even if I don't share, you have the materials with you, I guess, eh? Mm, guys, you have the materials? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, we have. Good, good, good. That was the whole purpose that we, I could share the materials so that you can be following. Yeah, so that's what we, 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 we you'd like to do. Even when you're a customer, you want to deal with somebody whom you know that has good uh, resources because that resource can give them the capacity to uh, supply what you are giving them as an order. Ah, they've got that good reputation. So it becomes a, a source of your competitiveness, so to speak. The third one is human resource. The goodness about the human resources is that it's flexible, they can help you, they can build you, but at the same time, they can also destroy you, huh? you know? Human resources can even sell against you, by the way. So it's quite delicate, but it's the most important uh, resource that you have that can help you to be seen, to be unique. I'll tell you, for example, uh we we're giving examples of you c u z among the human resource the important human resource that uh, must be taken care of that would help them in terms of skills in terms of um, experiences and knowledge are lecturers am i right yeah now, lecturers can build the institution or they can even make it, they can even destroy it, in short. So, if you're the owner of the business and things like that, you got to find a way ensuring that such uh, resources are motivated, are harnessed. Because they are the ones that are going to give you your competitiveness, your uniqueness. Yeah, how dedicated they can be. But to, for them to be dedicated, they need to be motivated as well. Yeah. And the, that is a huge topic to talk about, eh? Huge, huge, huge topic. Yeah. But we appreciate that as a resource for the time being. Another one is called marketing resources. In the marketing resources, the most important thing we want to um, uh, to appreciate is that we want to look at the relationships that the company has with customers realizing that customers are a big asset for us so we have to have the marketing resource or the ways and the means of ensuring we are closer to the customers we are building loyalty with the customers because they're going to give you the, the value for your business okay that's the point we want to emphasize there. Mm -hmm. That's the point we want to emphasize there as a resource. The last one under this, we are going to call it as a, uh, information systems. Information systems. We already said about uh, how information 
how important information is as a resource. And therefore, you're looking for or ensuring that information is available that would enable people to make decisions. And those decisions are the ones that will propel the company to move ahead. Is that okay? I'm sure you you followed that aspect, eh? Okay. So, yes, any question? Any question? Okay, so it's not a question. No question. Okay. Good. So, yeah. So those were the major. Uh, those were the major uh, sources or routes for our competitiveness as a company. Now, don't people get confused sometimes when you ask this question about the routes for competitiveness compared comparing on how the company can develop competitiveness uh, people get confused i'll show you i'll demonstrate to you as we move on okay now let's look at uh, resource-based strategic options what strategies can you be able to come up with once you you have done your, uh, you have used the resource uh, resource based view in uh, analyzing the organization's resources capabilities or capacities and then uh, you've seen where you can find your the roots for your competitiveness so what strategy uh, strategic options do you have Now, we need to come up with a matrix or quadric. Do you remember the way you, you draw either BCG or unsolved matrix, eh? With that square or rectangle, whatever it is, with the four apartments in, inside. Can you draw that? Guys, are we together? Hello? Yes, sir. together. We are together. Yes, we can. Some of us can draw. I don't know. That. Oh. Okay. Can you can everyone draw that? Draw, yeah, good. So we will borrow from um, uh, what Ansof did. We are bo going to borrow from that. Now, on top of that uh, uh, table that you have put, or, or that uh, matrix that you have put, on top you should say customers, or sometimes you can call it market anyway customers or market okay and on the left side a little bit down on the left side of the quadrant you are going to say odd odd or ld then on the right hand side you call it new new okay now let's go to the the left hand side the left hand side you call it resources resources then uh, on top of that line on top of uh, the quadrat you also call you call it odd and then downward you call it new 
it's exactly like what the answer of the way we drew answer of why old and exactly anybody having challenges to do that don't shy, be shy eh? yeah i want you to to make it look like this uh-huh you are able to see that customers order new there then on the other side here did you see there where it says resources then you got the order new as well are we together yes sir good you've drawn it yes, you've sir. drawn it exactly like that mm. okay uh -huh. well, i hope that was an agreement now let's see, see the strategies that you can come up with now inside we'll put their strategies so if a uh, you have existing resources which are old anyway and then you are also in touch or working within the existing market or with existing customers yeah with existing customers what is uh, the strategy that you want to uh, uh, to pursue there put it inside you should say you need to exploit resources so you put the exploit resources that's a strategy so inside where we put inside as in where exactly in the box inside the box the quadrat quadrat on the corner under new resources no old resources under and old customers i've been using that old and old isn't it you have old and old am i right Yes. Um, others, yes. Others, no. Chanda yukona. Chanda will get to you quite nicely. Mm -mm. First, Osa, can you please show us one more time your diagram? <laughs> yes, I think yeah, that would be better. Okay. No, no, can't see. <laughs> Have you seen this is odd and odd? Customer, mm -hmm. odd, resource, odd. So it's odd and odd. Odd and odd. Have you seen that? No. I can't see anything, I personally. <laughs> yeah, you got the blind eyes. No, sir, like it's just dark on my screen. I can't see anything. No. Yes. Uh, use Colgate to clean it. <laughs> so, how can I... Glad you stop where he's, he's showing. Huh? Tap on his it? name and then you'll be able to see. Come okay, again? okay, okay, Chanda. Thank you. Oh, so a bit up. Mm-hmm. You've seen that, eh? Yes. So we've got to 
uh, customers on top there, but odd, the, the knee resources there are also odd. So now we've got odd and odd. The other side is new, and the other downside is also new. Do you, okay. you have forgotten your answer of matrix? Mm. Okay, so anyway, that's how it is now. If we, we are together there, that's fine. So the last box is old? Okay, so let's take one, one step at a time. So we got now all the customers and all the resources. So the strategies are the ones we're writing inside the matrix. Because you had divided the box into four, didn't you? Okay. So now, what uh, would be the strategy when you have existing resources and you are operating in the existing market or you're dealing with the old customers? We call it uh, resource exploitation or exploit resources. Then you go further in the same box, you write to say to establish relationships upstream and downstream. Sorry, sir, you said we write the next summary? Okay, you had put uh, inside, you had said the exploit resources or resource exploitation as a strategy, right? In the yes. same box, in the same box, why do you want to, I was just giving an explanation. Why do you want to exploit resources? Why do you have to follow that uh, strategy? Because you are saying to establish relationships upstream and downstream. Establish relationships upstream and downstream. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you you have you have written that, eh? Everyone, you've written that. There is the answer so that we move on. You have established that, Ka? I mean, you have written that, eh? Let's move, sir. Okay. Now, on the resource side, you know you have all yes, the resources. Sir. Then, on the customers, you have now new customers, meaning you are using the current resources or existing uh, resources to reach the new markets or the new customers. So it is uh, on top, on the right side, that quadrant or that matrix is the box that we want to write something there. And the strategy you're going to write is called the Stretch resources to new customer groups. Stretch resources to new customer groups. Are you there? Okay, if you've written that, 
let's come down to the left, the down department to the left, where you are saying you have new resources, and then you are uh, um, introducing these new resources in the existing market or old, uh, old customers. What is the strategy? Right in the box there, you should say, renew and nurture the resource base. Renew and nurture the resource base. Mm -hmm. Renew and nurture the resource base. In a situation where now you have new resources, acquired new resources, and then you are entering into the new market or new, new, dealing with the new customers, this is called the business development or you can call it further business development. You're followed now, eh? Are we okay so far? I'm okay here. You're okay there, Levy. Good. Good. If people have challenges, you ask Levy, you get a, a copy and you send it on WhatsApp, you're going to be able to see that, but I think it's straightforward. So those are, it's a summary of the strategies you are going to read. The, from where it says resource-based strategic options down all all those four uh, options are there as well yeah yeah and then you're going to find which ones are, are easy to follow or which ones can be followed and others a bit a challenge because there are risks involved in following some of those strategies for example new new is a sort of kind of uh, risks because sometimes you might win or sometimes you might lose all your investment good let's go to uh, the other one now we're going to look at the value chain based view vbv value chain the value chain based view Mm -hmm. which is this one this one I'm talking about now for this particular one I'll give you three minutes to draw the value chain uh, something that you have uh, come across, I know that because it was developed by Professor Michael Porter. It's called the value chain, and uh, for the time being, you know it's called the primary and support activities. So draw it. After you draw it, you tell me to say no. No, we have drawn it the way it looks like, and then we we'll move on from there. We'll talk about it. You've got three minutes to do that.
<laughs> Glads, you have already done it. <laughs> no, sir, not yet. <laughs> Okay, I'm sure people have drawn it now. Anybody who has a challenge? Who can he, anybody with any challenge, by the way? Uh, guys, are you there? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Man, yes, I don't know. How, I don't know what to do. Like honestly, I'm just stuck here. <laughs> Levy, you've done something. Ah, you. <laughs> I found something. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's a correct. <laughs> I hope it is. So, how could we see it? Okay, can you describe it, Chanda? Uh, okay, maybe I can try to show it. Uh... Yeah, sure, maybe. But you have to present if you are to show it, ka? No, 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 no. No, just is there. Yeah. Oh. Let me see. The support activities there. Eh? <clears throat> uh huh. Web frame oh, infrastructure. Yes. Be good. Human resource management, technology, good. technology development and procurement. Good. And then down here. We have uh, primary activities, mm -hmm. so inbound logistics, operations, outbound mm -hmm. logistics, marketing and sales, and service. Good. Yeah. Now, the only thing which is missing... Ah, Chanda, you don't close. Oh. Uh. Mm. Put it back your way. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know the ones on top there. You've seen that uh, the ones down. You have uh, columns, eh? Yes. Which I have shown like uh, inbound, uh, process, outbound, uh, marketing and sales, uh, and uh, customer service stuff. Yes. Uh huh. And then the ones on top there. You know that there are lines which run uh, parallel, which are horizontal oh, yes. lines. I yes, I didn't just put them. Yes. 
Can you put a, a special, just to close the, the one on top? Okay. Uh -huh. Close the one on top. Good. Now, they must at the end, to the far end there, they must be like pointing to one, uh, to one point. You must draw them this to side? point like they are pointing at one point. This side. Good. And the other one, that one must meet. You, 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 now you are making a triangle like. Yeah, at the far end that here. That one must drop. At the far end, yes. Yes. Let it go. Uh, the one on top, the line you have drawn on top. That okay. line you have drawn on top to close the, the it. Aha, now drop it. No, not that way. It must Which be side? like a, or a vertical going down. Okay. Okay, let me just, uh, um, just a no. minute. Sir. Okay, because there's something you have missed. Oh. Okay, because these two, uh -huh. these two are supposed to come like this, like this, like this shape. Uh -huh. yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Ah, now that don't... Yes, yeah. that shape. Good. But of course, I don't have. Uh, do you know why they have to come like uh -huh. that? I don't know, sir. But I just saw something written margin beside. Aha! Uh -huh. Put those margins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Put it. I'll margins. just connect good. it this side. Chanda, where are you getting that information from? Chanda. Uh, Google Chanda it. Cloud. Google it. You can even Google it. You can even <laughs> copy and paste it there. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. Sir. Yeah. I share the link. Let me share the link so that everyone can see. Yeah. Yeah. Bad address. Can you share the link? Okay. Yeah. Victor, show us your oh, drawing. Get a photo, photo of it. Get a photo of it and okay. just put it on WhatsApp. That's it. Chanda, okay. we need that drawing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, Victor. Also, you don't know it. Yeah, that was the only one. Ah, get out. I know it. <laughs> I sent it, guys. You thank you, there? but you. Hmm. Chanda. Yes. Yes. I've seen it. Okay. And your bed in the background is making noise. Okay. Let me just turn off my. Release, Chanda. What's your problem? Good. <laughs> yeah, it's quite similar like that. Yes. Thank you, uh, Chand. So everybody should draw it like that. Mm -hmm. major activities which is the company tends or is able to carry out in the inbound logistics you're talking about uh, those things that come into the organization uh, things like uh, uh, materials that you bring in uh, even labor that comes in to do the job 
you need transport that is going to bring those materials. You need to look at how you're going to control the stock and things like that. Now, each of those, you have to check in terms of quality, in terms of the value they're going to be able to add when they're coming into the organization. The operation side is the processing, or some people call it transmission. This is where you're turning now uh, the raw materials into products, or you're turning, like in your case now, this is where, like what we are doing now, learning so that you are baked, you become to know you have knowledge. And that will include the number of things that are involved, such as if it's in the physical products, packaging and things like that, uh, after transforming the product or assembling those products, testing them and things like that. Okay. Then after you produce them, they become finished products. And the finished products is what you are calling as the outbound logistics. So what are some of the things which are logistics there, storage, uh, everything that has to do with the distribution anywhere and the services that go along with that. Then uh, the marketing and sales, this is about uh, informing the people or persuading the people to buy the product. They add value by doing that. And then uh, the services that we render. At the time when uh, actually uh, Porter was uh, developing this, this was a time when his services were being emphasized very much in every organization. And a number of companies even came up with what we're calling as the service departments. Okay, so those are the things. Now, in order to carry out this, and at any of these uh, stages that we're talking about, inbound, operation, outbound, marketing, there is a value that is being added. For example, look at the raw materials. When they come, they're, they're in the form which is different. They are raw, so to speak, but they are valuable. You can even measure the value to it. Okay, it costs us so much. How much did it cost us to get this particular hundred kwacha, for example? That's a value to it. Now, when you take it to operation, at operational level, you're going to change the hundred kwacha you're going to add to 120, for example. Because there's something that you are putting to that raw material that make it to be more valuable. That's the value you are adding. And that the marketing, this is where now the services that you're going to do or the information that you're going to give to the people, you are adding value to it as well. The services where maybe installations, spare parts, uh, servicing the cars and training people and all those things, that's all value you are adding. Now, to do that, you need the people to support you. What are the supporting things? Supporting things are procurement, the technology that you have, human resources, we talked about infrastructure, uh, goes to things like finance and quality control and things like that. All those are put under infrastructure. Now, what can we use this uh, VBV for? Remember, it's going to help us to identify areas where we need to add value. And at the end of it, it's going to help you to have competitive advantage on the market. That's the whole idea. It's a way of analyzing, again, uh, how you're doing as an organization, your resources, how you're putting everything into, into work, and then how then they can help you to become more competitive on the on the market okay any question it's not your first time to come across this uh, model uh, uh, although we are just calling it as a vbv value chain based view but it's a one which is used by Marco, michael porter as it were Okay, any question on that in that particular one? If you have any challenges to draw it the, on your computer, there are so many versions. Oh yeah, the aspect uh, which I uh, was almost forgetting. Those that uh, arrow which points at one, uh, one end and it's called margin, margin, margin. It simply means 
all of this, the support and the primary, they are leading you to one thing. That's why the arrow is like that. So what is that thing it's going to lead you? To profitability, where? To achieve your objective of me being a profitable organization. How? Those are the ones they are calling as margins. Margins are profit margins. You are increasing the profit margins once you carry out or you do, you keep on adding value to your uh, activities or to your business or to your product, so to speak. I'm sure people that were followed, eh? Why are people dropping? Oh, uh, I'm remaining with you only two. Why are people dropping, Chanda? <laughs> Levy? I don't know what's happening. Yep. They have run out of. Uh, but at one. But, but, but uh, okay. Uh, Tokozile complained about network. Says she's having challenges with network here. I can hear. See where she's written here. Uh, she can't see or see anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she is and things like that. And now there are only two of you. Well, in fact, uh, maybe uh, the next uh, topic is a bit longer. So I was thinking maybe we can uh, even rest here. We are going to carry, uh, to begin from de developing the firm's competitive advantage. You remind me that eh, when we meet next. Please put that as your as your mark where we're going to start from. How can firm now firms develop their competitive advantage? That's what we're going to look at. Okay. Any questions? We're okay, sir. You okay? Chanda, you okay? Uh, Chanda, are you with us or you have also dropped? I can see her here, but I don't know what's happening. Wow, wow. It's, it's internet thing. Yeah, Chanda, we were saying, are you with us? Everyone has yeah. gone. Is class still on? Yeah. Oh, you went to make a cup of coffee and that's when you've come back. <laughs> she went to eat. Wow. Can you imagine that? This 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 is school or the internet. Eh? I'm telling you. You can remain talking to yourself. Anyway, let's uh, let's rest here. Since uh, most people have dropped out the uh, internet issues, uh, we will continue from there. Thank you very much for your coming on board. Wish you the best you for the week. Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you.